Being a dentist can be amazingly awesome, changing people's lives, helping them chew and smile with confidence, some of the best parts of being a dentist. But being a dentist, it can also be amazingly annoying. Doing full contact arts and crafts on people who don't want to be there can drive anyone nacho nuts. I should know, my name is Paul, Dr. Nacho Goodman, and I've been dentisting for 18 years. One of the things I've noticed in dentisting over 18 years is you have days where you do awesome. Patients will look at you and say, thanks for changing my life. Do a whole mouth of implants, upper and lower. People look at me and say, Paul, I should have done this sooner. I love my implants. I can chew. I can smile. They're great. But I also have this experience. I don't know if you've ever had this experience before where you're trying to put a band on a molar and then you put the band on, then you put the ring thing on, the ring thing flies across the room, pings on the floor, ping, ping, ping. I think we should go back to carpets because the, with the hardwood floors we have now, lots of pinging. You go to put a crown in like this, you ever put a crown in, you drop it, pings on the floor. The patient's like, do we need that? You're like, kind of. Just slowly lean down, put it in peridex. We'll just let it sit here for a while. Those are the things that can be stressful during your dentisting day or do the thing that I say dentists have to do. So when that ring flies off the tooth and you say to your dental assistant, could I see the box of the other class two ring thingies? And you're looking down and you're hoping in that box is a molar ring and she opens it up and there's a mangled pedo one. And you have to do that thing dentists have to do. You have to say, perfect, just the one I wanted while crying on the inside. You're a dentist. That's where you have to keep your crying, on the inside. I've made a chart here over my career of how often I've cried on the inside. So when I started as a dentist, I was, was pretty high. It's gotten lower, but then we've had a pandemic happen. Crying's gotten higher. It's gotten a little bit lower now. So what I want to share with you are ways for you as a dentist to decrease stress, increase patient-centered production, increase the happiness level in your life for your patients and team because there's many things that make us want to cry inside a day there's many things that cause us stress i've made a, a fancy diagram here what might those things be the class two ring thing flying off someone saying my sister's dental insurance covers veneers implants and botox why doesn't mine i don't know maybe because your sister's a liar i think that's why but what do you say when patients say why doesn't my insurance cover that we'll help you with that um your amazing team. Sometimes my amazing team does an amazing job fighting over who took the last box of lidocaine. Sometimes running a dental practice feels like you're running a circus where the animals don't try to eat you, just slowly annoy you to death. What can we do to make this experience better? And I put down one of my favorites, lower dentures, where people say this thing doesn't work. I know. I told you it wasn't going to work. Dentures without implants are for smiling, not chewing. That's a patient talking tip. So at Dental Nachos, my entire goal is to help you cry less on the inside by increasing your dentisting core, by making your dentist core better. I'm coming from the gym, uh, exhausted dad gym session. That's why I look like this. I was at the gym. It inspired me to do this. What can we do? I don't want to brag about the weights I can lift, but here's one of them. This is one of the lights. What can we do to increase, to make our dentisting core better? And what is our dentisting core? It's our mind. It's our words. It's our hands. Those are the skills, your mind, the business and leadership decisions you make as a dentist, your words, your communication, the way you talk to people, not just patients, also your team and other dentists, your suppliers, your vendors, and then your hand skills, how to make the most beautiful crown prep the world has ever seen, your favorite thing. Dental school focuses a lot on hands, but then you get out of dental school and you're like, man, I should have learned more about mind and words because when a patient says, I don't like the work you've done. I want a refund. You can't say Krebs cycle, Millie. Krebs cycle, I can recite the Krebs cycle. That's helped me precisely never times. But how to talk to patients about difficult scenarios, like when dental, dental treatment didn't last as long as we had hoped. Do I want to offer health insurance to my team? Yes or no? That's a business decision. How to read a PL? That might have been helpful. Instead, we were in basements burning ourselves with hot wax second year while our friends were out having fun. I don't know why making a mediocre bite room was so important. I've made precisely zero since I've gotten out of dental school. I've waxed up zero central incisors, but it would have been really helpful to know how to manage my team when they're arguing over scenarios or when everybody wants off on the day before July 4th. So at Dental Nachos, we help you with all of these things by strengthening your dental core, by learning how to use your mind, your hands, and your words, especially through through our CE programs, through our key resources and sponsors. There's so much stuff out there that can help you with this. So let me share with you a treatment plan to make you stop crying. Well, sorry, it's impossible. Can't, I can't make you stop crying, but I can lower 
the amount of times you cry on the inside of day. You can make systems for success. Everything that matters needs a system and everything matters. You can learn how to manage expectations. The key to success in life is me, managing expectations. These are all parts of being a successful dentist. So then you can be more like this, increasing patient-centered production, increasing profit, decreasing stress, and maybe having a little more happiness and fun. In our dental office, I just wanna ask you, does anybody want to work more hours clinically each week? The answer is no, because dentisting hours are dog ear hours. The hour you spend doing full contact arts and crafts is not the same as other hours that people spend at their jobs. You've put your emotions, your body, your soul into it, and it's not easy. Has anyone had this experience before? There's a, you walk into an operatory, person says to you, I don't hate you. I just hate the dentist. And I want to say, well, we don't hang out after the office hours here. So it feels like you just hate me. Being a dentist can be stressful, but it also can be awesome. We get to do cool things for people. So focus on those cool things. Focus on patient-centered production. Focus on how to be more profitable. Focus on building your team and creating systems. The stuff they didn't tell us in dental school. And if you don't figure it out, no matter how financially successful you are, Personally and professionally, you will not be the successful person you want to because if you're watching this, and this has happened to all of us, happened to me, has dentisting, the stress in your dental office affected your personal life? Has it affected your relationships with other people? The answer to that is yes, because what we do can be nacho nuts. So I want to help you with this at Dental Nachos, decrease stress, increase success, and I'm going to share with you to get started a five a five-step treatment plan of good ideas from our key resources and sponsors. There's so many things out there that can help you that I didn't even know existed when I was a new dentist. Some of these I didn't know existed until recently. So what are some things you can do right now? JFO, just find out. Keep up momentum. These are key resources and sponsors of Dental Nachos that work with dentists to help them be happier, decrease stress for them and their team. Number one, Here's the word we're then 215-543-6454. Text happy. What is that? What does the happy text do? That is an amazing company, PPO Profits, that will help you negotiate higher insurance fees. Let this sink in for a minute. There is a company that will help you get paid more for the exact same work you're doing now forever. Does it always happen? No. Can it happen? Yes. I recommend you JFO just find out. There's dentists in the group that have had their lives changed forever by connecting. Get a complimentary consultation by texting HAPPY to 215-543-6454. One of the biggest nacho brainers, Local Med. Local Med is an amazing key resource and sponsor that allows your patients to schedule their appointments at convenient times for them. So you block out times in your systems for, for your system for cleanings, new patients, emergencies, and let the patient schedule on their terms. This will keep your hygiene schedule full. This will bring in emergencies. It will decrease your team time. I have people making dental appointments at 2 a.m. because maybe a busy mom has to make it for the whole family then. Local Med is a true nacho brainer text out there. Flix, talk about your hands. This all matches up with our dentist in core. So here are the two pictures. Your mind, your insurance fees, business and leadership topics. Local med, how you communicate with people, communication. Now, you want stuff for your clinical clinical stuff? Because I know you like I know you like crown preps. I know you like emergent profiles. Do you like a shoulder or chamfer burr? Let's fight about it. I think we should fight about it. Uh, text Flix. Flix is our resource. Dental Nacho Flix is over 100 hours of content, CE, that you can use and get a free 30-day test pass by texting Flix to 215-543-6454. This is not 100 hours of me. It's 100 hours of me plus amazing dentists from all over the world. Dentists on restorative dentistry, sleep apnea, how to be a better leader, cosmetic dentistry, endo. It's an awesome resource that you can use from literally one of my BFFs in life, your phone. So text Flix to 215-543-6454. CBCT, a lot of things we talk about is implant dentistry, but CBCTs are not just for implants. They're an awesome tool we have in our office now that allows you to diagnose better, to be able to communicate with patients better. It's become an amazing opportunity for all dentists to have a CBCT, I recommend you find out about it. It'd be a life-changing experience for you and your dental practice. Text CBCT to 215-543-6454. Now, I've saved one of the best for last year, okay? So, would you like something that would prevent patients from swallowing stuff? Sounds good. Uh, prevent too much moisture from getting on the tooth. Here's the nacho nuts parts. Hi, hi dentist. Uh, you need to do this small, tiny work, class two's little things. Bop, bop. It's a box, right? Four, an hour of work for this. Did you? The class two. But while you're doing it, we just want you to keep it as dry as possible. Okay, fine. Where are we working? We're working in the mouth, which is wet. 
That's really insane. So if you want something to prevent people from swallowing stuff, keep the area dry, keep the patient's mouth open, and get them to just stop talking during treatment. I like talking before treatment and after treatment, but sometimes you're going to work and someone's telling you about their sixth cat, and you're like, I don't know how to work here. Say, we're going to put this thing in for you to bite down on, and we'll talk later. So the Isolite is literally one of my BFFs in dentistry. Text Isolite to 215-543-6454. You'll get nacho TLC and connections to all of these five things. Do one, do two, do three, do four, do five. I encourage you, I kindly annoy you to constantly be doing things to make things better in your life, a little bit better each day. ABC, always be creative, always be connecting. Because at the end of the day, whether you're a new dentist, whether you're a medium age dentist, whether you've been doing this as long as I've been alive, 43 years, we want to stop you from crying inside each day. We're limiting the numbers that you cry inside a day. Because that's the feeling we get as dentists. I, I, I use this here, Mr. Grumbly. This is how it feels when things don't go right in our office and we have challenging scenarios. Create systems for you to be successful. We can help you in any way during this entire time. Strengthen your dentist and core. Just reach out to us by texting Good Nachos to 215-543-6454 or email salsa dentalnachos.com. We have so many toppings for you to help you along your journey of the circle of dentisting life. Finding your first job, hiring an associate, buying your first practice, how to improve yourself clinically, business, practice management. If we don't have the answer, we will help you find someone who does have that answer. There are too many huge transitions in the life of a dentist, and they don't have the support that they need to succeed. We don't learn how to survive and thrive in the real world, and it causes problems. I like to make a lot of fun jokes as Dr. Nacho, but I like to also JBR just be real. The mental health of dentists, the serious issues that are happening with depression in the dental industry, the isolation. We work in caves by ourselves. My friend, Dr. Eric Cornelius, made that reference that a C-course is perfect. We don't work on island. We work in caves. Come out of the cave and bond. Learn about these things. One of my messages, nobody likes the dentist. We may as well like each other. So I really appreciate you being here, being part of our Dental Nachos community. If you have any friends that want to be part of our community, which is totally free to join, just have them text Nachos to 215-543-6454. If we can help you in any way, reach out to us. To us. I encourage you to start doing things for your practice, for your practice life, to grow, to be better, a little bit better each day makes a lot better dentisting life. The more we share, the more we care, the better dentisting world we can build together. Look to reach out to somebody in the dental world who needs your help too. We all need help along our journey. We all need people who are there for us. So if you got help as a baby age dentist bed, help someone else. If you're a medium age dentist looking to buy a practice, reach out and share your story with someone. If we can help you share your story, email us at salsadentalnachos.com. I encourage you one more time, strengthen your dentist and core, strengthen your core with our nacho plate of good ideas. Text these words to 215-543-6454. They're sponsors, they're key resources. Just find out about what they can do to transform your life in the best way because everyone in the dental office deserves to be happy the patients of course the team yes and even you the dentist the, your morale matters you're the leader of this team you may be the leader in your operatory it's important you feel good you feel supported you know how to troubleshoot things we can make a new dentisting world it doesn't have to be the dental student hunger games which translate into the dentist hunger games we can reach out to each other and create a community virtual in person online where we can learn from each other we can earn c along the way we can enhance our businesses and we can learn that strengthening our dentisting core is the most important thing for us to do from day one of d1 until we're a rad what's a rad a retired age dentist thanks for listening for any more information just reach out to us at dentalnachos.com email us at salsa dentalnachos.com or text good nachos to 215-543-6454「Hi, my name is Dr. Paul Nacho Goodman, dentalnachos.com, and I would like to share with you about a challenge that dentists have every day. Well, mainly general dentists, not periodontists, they don't do this. Smart move, guys. Not endodontists, another smart move. General dentists, pediatric dentists, maybe prosthodontists. That is the class two composite. One of the most frustrating 
and annoying procedures we can do in dentistry. We will spend all kinds of time, effort, sweat on the inside part of our body to do something like this, like a tiny thing, right? Just a little box. It's not easy. At Dental Nachos, we want to help decrease your annoyance and increase your happiness with the Class 2 composite. Text ANNOY to 215-543-6454. Text ANNOY to 215-543-6454. And we will send you a nacho coupon for our amazing CE on TV with world-class class tour, I think that's what he called himself, Dr. Jason Smithson. We will be zooming him in from England and he will be telling you steps to make one of the most annoying procedures in dentistry just a little less annoying. And if that's not what life's all about as a dentist, I don't know what is. Hey Dental Nacho friends, it's Paul Dr. Nacho. I'm in my dental office. I just finished a composite. I don't want to show it to you because I will make Jason Smithson jealous. I put tertiary, no quaternary, no the fifth version of anatomy into this occlusal composite. I want to share with you one of my favorite systems using the isolite, one of my favorite patients. It makes you work faster, keeps things dry. If you drop something, the patient will swallow it. I want you to say to yourself, Dennis, you are worth the isolite. Get up tomorrow morning, look in the mirror and say, I'm worth using this to decrease my stress, decrease my anxiety, increase my efficiency. If you want to learn anything about the Isolate for us, it's an awesome sponsor of our group. Just text Isolate to 215-543-6454 and be on the lookout for composite courses coming up from Dental Nachos. Both me, Dr. Paul Goodman, world-class, no, no universe-class compositor, and Dr. Jason Smithson, who's pretty good too. Thanks, guys. Welcome to Dental Nachos TV. You are watching how not to burn your nachos when buying a dental practice. My name is Paul, Dr. Nacho Goodman. I am the host, the main speaker, and also the commercial guy because our budget for this show is quite small. We did get a review of our last show. The review said the show was perfect in every way. That reviewer was my Aunt Gigi. She also wants me to let you know that I am smart, handsome, and if anyone needs a pie, she will be glad to bake it for you. On tonight's episode, we will talk about how to avoid a $30,000 mistake when purchasing a dental practice, a mistake I made nine years ago and I'm still quite annoyed about. If you missed the first episode, the four P's to purchasing a practice, you can watch it for free by texting FLIX, F-L-I-X, to 215-543-6454. How Not to Burn Your Nachos While Buying a Dental Practice is sponsored by the Dental Nachopedia and Dental Nacho Flix. The Dental Nachopedia is 60 plus hours of amazing CE that you get to own for life as a learning resource. It goes over every topic, clinical, practice management, business, leadership, patient communication, and most of all, how to cry inside less each day as a dentist. You can own this for life for less than $500. Dental Nacho Flix is amazing CE as well that you get to rent monthly for only $19. For those of you dentists who have a lot of debt or are just super frugal. To learn about either of these, just visit dentalnachos.com or text FLIX to 215-543-6454. If you are watching this show live, please feel free to ask questions in the Zoom chat. If you're watching this on demand, just shout the questions at your TV and I may hear them. So we're going to start the show in just a minute, but before we start it, I want to remind you that we have awesome prizes at Dental Nachos. Write down this number, 215-543-6454. It's our Dr. Nacho community text. To get started, if you text CBCT, CBCT, to 215-543-6454, we will send you a free CE course on the value of using a CBCT. Also, I want to ask you a question. Do some of you have hopes? Do some of you have, dr have dreams? I had hopes. I had dreams. One of them was to dunk in the NBA. That dream did not come true. But if you want some help with your dentisting dreams, how to treatment plan your life, just text DREAMS to 215-543-6454. One of my favorite things to do is to get on calls, Zooms, FaceTimes, and to help dentists at any age or stage treatment plan their dentisting life in a super affordable way help you know what to do as the next step to not burn your nachos and me feel more confident in the decision you are about to make. And as always, if we can help you in any way, just reach out to us at dentalnachos.com. And I hope you enjoy this show, how not to burn your nachos when buying a dental practice, how to avoid a $30,000 mistake by following the nacho yellow brick road. Are you a dentist that has hopes and dreams? 
owning a practice, hiring an associate, finding a good job, and most of all, crying less on the inside each day. My name is Paul, Dr. Nacho, and I can help you with those hopes and dreams. As a dentist, I treatment plan dental implants to help patients chew and smile with confidence. As Dr. Nacho, which I think is a real doctor and should be. Hey guys, how you doing? Excited to be here with you on this Sunday. The Nacho family is at an activity, so I'm here all by myself at Nacho headquarters. They probably need to break from me anyway. The show is be fun for you to learn. This is part of our How Not to Burn Your Nachos When Buying a Dental Practice series. It's a series to help you along the journey, the Nacho Yellow Brick Road, me sharing how I made a $30,000 mistake in 2011. So if I knew what I knew now, I would have at least $30,000 more and a lot, a lot less stress. Today, we want to focus on what to do when your practice deal is about to die and you want to cry. So I have been involved. I came from uh, Washington Square Park. I know some people on here are big worker. They know who they are working out. So I don't want to impress, especially with doing the show, I'll be curling this weight the entire time. No, I'm just, just joking. So what happens in the process where you, you know, get down, it's a Sunday football day, you know, get down to the goal line, you're about to score and the deal dies. And I'd love for you to talk, to ask questions in the chat, share in the chat what you're thinking about. We're going to go over a lot of different information. We're going to deconstruct this. It's, it's for fun. It's for free. It's for you. And we're going to start off by talking about a scenario of a real practice that I have. So I have three current listings of general practices as a practice broker. We have a three-op practice that's $800,000 in Philadelphia County. We have a five-op practice that's $950,000 in Philadelphia County. We have six-op practice uh, in Southern PA that does 1.4 million in 2019. If you're watching this now, you know that COVID has been a whole thing for 2020. Not sure if you're aware of it, if you're watching this 10 years from now, 2020, not the easiest year for earth or for dentists. We also have a new endo practice listing, but what I wanna share is I'm selling practices regularly. I'm also coaching buyers, never on the same deal. So one thing, if you turn it off right now, working with a dual rep uh, broker can be very, very dangerous. A dual rep broker claims to be able to represent you and the seller, the buyer and the seller at the same time. And this can be a huge problem. I don't know how this is a thing. I don't know why it's, it's legal in dentistry, but if you're working with a dual rep broker who claims they can represent you and the other party, buyer and seller at the same time, really be cautious, ask a lot of questions. My hope is that this gets out of our industry. I either work for the seller as a broker on one deal, don't do anything else for the buyer. I work with the buyer, give them information, but I don't coach them. Or I will help coach the buyer on a different deal to make sure their deal is not going to drive them nacho nuts or burn their nachos. So I'm going to bring up a presentation here in a second for us to, to, uh, for us to look at. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. want us to look at deal die crying nachos here it is and we are going to deconstruct the practice deal okay so like to always deliver value up front so what is the most important thing to realize from this Nacho rant? If you turn it off now, whether you're watching at home, whether you're watching on demand, the most important practical thing to remember from this Dr. Nacho rant is what is the major factor in determining the value of a practice? Now, since we're here, I love, some of you have been to my in-person lectures. That's really what I prefer. I can you know, talk to people, I can call on people, but we're here on Zoom. I love doing that as well, but it's just not quite as fun. So I love when you interact. So let's vote here. What is the biggest factor a, B, C, or D, and determine the practice value. All our factors, what's the most important? I'll give you guys 60 seconds to vote in the chat. Good, we had someone vote, that's good. I also know some of you in the chat, so if you don't vote, I'm gonna start making jokes about how much you can uh, squat. So, okay, good. Thanks. I got C here. A. All I have to do is put a letter in the chat. So we sum for location. Some put C. Thank you for the people. That, so watch the two people who did it, Amanda, send them a 
$50 gift card outside of the one you're already getting. $50 gift code. So you get an extra $50 gift code for participating. There's benefits to participating. And someone did it in the chat, in the, in the Q&A. So great. So we got A and C. So I would have got this answer wrong in 2011. I would have voted for D, total collections. So a myth, a total myth is that your practice is worth 70% of total collections. The answer is C, net profit. So if, you watch, if you're listening to this, watching this, one and a half to two times the net profit is an easy way to get a good starting point for what a practice is worth. Let's break down a scenario. Million dollar practice, Dr. Nacho's House of Dentistry, million dollar practice, net profit, $400,000. Million dollar practice, Dr. Bob Guac, net practice, $200,000. Do you wanna pay the same for those practices? In 2011, I would have. I would have paid the same. I didn't know. I paid 70% of collections for a practice. I didn't know the right questions to ask. I have overpaid, but it was my fault. I take responsibility. No one else. I did not know at that time. So you take responsibility for what happens to you during this practice journey. Ask the right questions. Protect yourself. So net profit. If you have this practice, a million dollars, profit six, 400,000. Okay, the one and a half to two times, six to 800,000. A million dollars profits 200,000. Now we're only at three to $400,000. Now, why doesn't the bank protect you? How come the bank would loan? The bank would likely loan similar on those practices pre-COVID. There's always been some challenges after COVID because the bank knows either way you're going to pay the loan and the bank wants you to get the banks. It's not the bank's job to make sure you make enough money to be happy. It's just the bank's job to make sure you make enough money to pay the loan. Important thing, golden nacho tip. It's not the bank's job for you to make enough money to be happy. The bank's job is just make sure you're a good risk to pay the loan. So some of you are associates right now making $200,000 a year and can easily make less as a practice owner. Now that may be the right move for you. You may make less for a little bit and then make more later, but it's a super important awareness point. So I know I talk fast, I think fast. People in this chat who've been around me know what I'm like in person, not easy, like a friendly tornado. Some of you just met me for the first time through Zoom. Maybe you're getting this vibe. So I talk fast, I think fast. So what I like to do during these webinars, which I would do in person, is whenever I stop my videos, it's an opportunity for you to ask a question in the chat for me to answer. It's an opportunity not to try to think and hear my voice at the same time. So who has questions about these four factors? We're going to move on to a lot of factors, but these four factors, number of active patients, net profit, total collections, location. So starting point for this entire thing, one and a half to two times the net profit is the starting point. I gave those two examples. So we have a practice that does a million dollars a year and collects and profits 400,000. We're in the six to 800,000 range. I'm going to talk more in a second, but what questions can I answer about this slide right now? If you'd like to learn about the practices we have for sale right now, like what is that practice in the window? Like the song says, just text nachos for sale to 215-543-6454. And a member of our team will share with you what practice we have for sale and how you can learn more about them. So uh, we had a question um, uh, here. Location is important for attractiveness. So a, six, a practice does a million dollars a year. One of the challenges I have, so here's three of the practices that I have right now, three ops, 800,000, five ops, 950, six ops, 1.4 million, okay? So uh, let's say, here's the answer, three, five, six. You don't know anything more about these right now. Put in the chat, which one would you like to buy? If you had to buy a practice, even if you own one, just pretend, just hypothetical. We're allowed to, we're allowed to have fun, Dennis. You can just say things. This is not a study, not, not serious, just us sharing. Which one of these would you want to buy? Three, five, or six here. Which one would fit what you want to do? Three, five, or six? three, five, or six. So a lot of you might choose the six operatory practice. Yeah, really good. Yeah, the six, of course. Six, but you're confused. People are confused. I know. So of all these, this is the toughest one I have to sell because it has six operatories. Great. It makes 1.4 million. Great. It has strong profit. Awesome. It is in the middle of Pennsylvania. So many people are not going to move to the middle of Pennsylvania. So this has an amazing seller. She's an amazing person. She's had interest, but what happens is People need to pick up their family life and move there. So location has to do with getting the deal done. 
Location has to do with how many people will move there. A lot of times adjusting the price isn't even a factor. It's trying to find it. So if you're looking to sell your practice in the next three to five years and you are in a location off the beaten nacho path, start to make videos about why someone want to move there. Why would they want to raise a family there? Is there a good school district? Is there fun stuff to do? The three operatory practice that did $800,000 in 2019 has room for a fourth. But what you know right there about that practice, that's a, that is a great dentist, a great dentist doing great stuff. Now, it doesn't mean you can't be a great dentist. But for someone to be able to earn that in, the, in three operatories means they have systems to do that. One of the things, when you look to buy a practice, can you replicate the services that the dentist is doing? Are they doing fillings, cleanings, crowns? And if they do root canals, do you do some root canals? Or are you going to learn root canals? It doesn't, none of these things, I know my dentist people. Uh, what should I say about my dentist people? You're a very negative people. I know, we went to dental school. All we ever learned was what was wrong. We're always worried about lightning, peri-implantitis. Implants are like the best thing ever. They work out well nine out of 10 times. All dentists want to talk about is the one out of 10 times it doesn't go well, or the 0.5 times. What about that one time at band camp we saw peri-implantitis? Just fix that problem. Focus on the good stuff. So with this stuff here in practice sales, it's so much different than dental care. There's no really right or wrong answer for this type of stuff, but it's your once decision. So just because you hear one challenge, like something has three operatories and you say, I'm not going to buy it. That's still going to be the right practice for somebody. You have to get out an ABE, always be exploring. This five operatory practice doing close to a million dollars a year is pretty much as straight out of the playbook as you could get. So always be exploring, see as many practices as possible talk to as many brokers as possible, be cautious for ones who are dual rep, ask a lot of questions, but now you're armed with information. Net profit, incredibly important. Number of active patients. Does anyone know where the number of active patients comes in? If you have a practice that's doing a million dollars a year, does this sound normal to you? Yes or no? You put in yes, no, I don't know. My practice, I'm gonna make it one up for myself. I do $1.5 million a year. I work four days a week. I do $1.5 million a year. I have one hygienist. I do $1.5 million a year. I have five operatories. I work four days a week. I have 900 active patients. Normal or not normal, or I don't know. Yes, normal. No, not normal. I don't know. Someone says, no, it's not normal. Someone said, yes, normal. So see, this is why we're here learning, because don't feel bad. They don't teach you this in dental school. Super into the Krebs cycle, super into remounting the remount of the remount. But maybe if they taught us a little bit about our biggest life decisions, we'd have less stress. But I can't change that right now. But what I do is I can deliver this information. So we got, yes, normal. No, not normal. I don't know. It's not normal. I'm an awesome dentist. A dentist doing $1.5 million on 900 active patients working four days a week is an extra fantastic dentist. That's a lower number of active patients. Now, if I told you 1,300 active patients, now we're moving into more normal type stuff. So the number of active patients is how much production is that dentist getting? Now, if I told you I was doing 1.5 million on 2,000 active patients, I'm probably an exhausted dentist. So these are all factors for you to consider along the way. How many active patients is the dentist seeing? 900 for 1.5 million, a pretty good dentist getting a lot out of those patients. 1,300, like Goldilocks, Nacho Goldilocks, probably just right. 2,000, also a problem. Now, 2,000, what does that mean? Are they taking a lot of insurance and that's reducing their fee? Are they just planning what people call bread and butter dentistry, which I, can we do something right now? Can we stop calling it bread and butter dentistry? Nobody eats bread and butter. It's a fancy treat. I eat it at a wedding and I look to seal someone's roll next to me. It's a special time off my diet. Kale and quinoa dentistry. That's normal dentistry now. No more bread and butter. That's a, every, that's a very special treat, bread and butter. So that's abnormal. Let's go with normal dentistry. So somebody who has 2,000 active patients, producing that only doing like cleanings and crowns, maybe that's an opportunity. But I want to share something with you right now. So if you want to buy a practice, you want to buy the practice that's being sold as it's being sold. If it has potential, you don't pay for potential. If you add potential, that is awesome. Adding potential. So if you find a practice that does $600,000 a year and has four operatories and the dentist works three days a week and the dentist is 73 years old and has done like thousands of fillings, like I'm hanging up the handpiece. There always should be some ceremonial thing where you hang up the handpiece. That might be an opportunity for you to add value if you let's just say place implants. Don't pay for that. So when the dentist says, oh, I don't do endo and I don't do implants and you could do all that stuff, say just now in your head, say nacho guy told me I don't pay for that, but I'm a nice person. Say that's a really good factor because that is a great opportunity. That is a great opportunity. So now let's just take a look for a minute. I'll take my face off screen so people get a break for me. These are the factors that determine practice value. This is, if you take a picture of this. So when you talk to a broker, take picture, write down answer to each one. 
everything that matters needs a system and everything matters. So I'm going to give you guys three full minutes. And I want you to put in the questions chat that you have about these nine things, because these nine things are every things. These nine things are every things. So if you look at this, what questions do you have about that? I'm going to share in the chat some other things you can do to get some resources. So if you are looking to sell. Man, it does this thing where I'm in the um, sharing screen that I can't, when I hit Q&A, I can't hear. So if you see one, you just copy and paste it in the chat. Okay, so these are the nine factors. Location, okay? Net profit to the dental owner, total collections, number of operatories, insurance profile. So if you purchase a fee-for-service practice, there's advantages because a fee-for-service practice doesn't participate with insurance and insurance is incredibly annoying. So right then and there, that's an advantage. One of the other challenges is those patients are often coming to the practice for that dentist. So watch this here, golden nacho tip, right? Because people listen to this later. Maybe they listen to it in their car, on their Peloton, and they say here, golden nacho tip, right? Listen to this. When you buy a fee-for-service practice, who are the patients that are most likely not going to try you as the new dentist? Who are these patients? I'll give you some examples, okay? Are they the patients that just love, 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 love the other dentist? They're selling dentists? Are they patients that live in a certain place? That's a clue. Patients that live in a certain place often will not try the practice when there's a change in ownership. Where might they live? Two words. Where might they live? So when you get a breakdown of the patients in the practice and you look at the zip codes, you want to see if they live here, they may not try you. We have a good question here in the chat here for a second. Good answer, right. Patients that travel from far away. Good answer, great, great answer, okay. Just like, what was the great answer? Uh, family feud, right, family feud, not just family feud. Good answer, good answer. People that travel from far away will likely say, hey, I'll find somebody close. PPO practice, they come because of their insurance, so often they still will come. Doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong. It all makes it, so when I used to teach this course, I'm a dentist now what, at University of Pennsylvania, I asked people this question, and I want you guys to answer this question. I'm gonna put it in the chat. If for the rest of your life, you had to sell a car to make a living, you had to sell a car to make a living, you had to sell a car to make a living, and no matter what, you get the same living, you're gonna make $150,000 a year, no matter what. Which type of car would you choose to sell? Which means, which of these cars, I'm gonna put in the chat, would you choose to sell? Also bring them to life, people are listening. Which one would you choose to sell to make your living? That means you get up every day, you go to this car dealership and you say, okay, I got to talk about this car. I got to talk about the benefits. I got to talk about the good parts, the not so good parts. And I got to deal with the people who usually buy these types of cars. Which one you pick? Now, don't go yet. Here's your choices. Can you just wait till all the choices? You could pick Mercedes, Lexus, Volvo, Honda, or I'm having a hard time thinking of one before. We'll leave Honda in there. Mercedes, Lexus, Volvo, Honda. You make the same money no matter what. Who wants to do Mercedes, Volvo, Lexus, Honda? We need three ones. Like someone, I got to vote for a Honda already. Got another Honda. Got a Mercedes. So what does this mean? If you sell Mercedes to make $150,000 a year, you have to sell fewer but likely the relationships you need to develop with those people are stronger. If you sell Hondas, you have to sell more, but the relationships likely not as strong. Doesn't mean it's good or bad, just means it's a thing. I was a restaurant server for 15 years. That's how I got the note to talk about all these practice stuff, maybe like 10 years, 16 to 26. How I got to talk to patients was being a restaurant server. I worked all different places. I worked at a diner truck stop with everybody else was, all the other servers were 60 and I was 16. When people wanted coffee, they would hold their cup up in the air. It was really, really obnoxious. I also worked 
at a corporate Mexican place where I got my love of nachos. I could eat as many chips as I want. Totally true story. When I was 19, 19 year old metabolism, you can do that. I learned so much stuff about corporate places, okay? Like a Chipotle style place. I also worked at fine dining. All of those required me to act a little bit different in those scenarios. But if I had to work at one place for the rest of my life, where would I be most comfortable? That's what you have to find out about your practice. Do you want to see a lot of patients? Do you want to see fewer patients? Do you want to develop more relationships, less relationships? Um, someone said, I don't know much about car types. So I choose the mid to lower range. So we got all, all over the place. That's so important. Try to assign a restaurant vibe or a car vibe to the practice and say, oh, this is like Chipotle. I'm here in Philadelphia. One of the greatest places on earth is here. Elvez, home of the best nachos on earth. So we have Elvez Chipotle Taco Bell. Everyone knows what that means, okay? I've eaten a Taco Bell. I don't know how they make a burrito two bucks, but they do, right? I've eaten it. I've eaten at Chipotle. I go with my kids. They make a mess everywhere. I've also eaten at Elvez. The, the, the nachos could be 16, nine, five. Not wrong, not right, just different. Which ones are you most comfortable making? Oh, we had a good question here. So here's a good question. Hi, dear Dr. Nacho Abby. If the practice has a valuation done by a third party and the seller wants to sell within 2% of the range of valuation, which is 83% of revenue, is it still considered overpriced? Great question. I would want to know that too. The way it works is, remember those three phrases. They will help you for the rest of your life. When someone asks you a question, that is a weird question. It's a question you just want to make them feel good about asking. This isn't a weird one. I'm happy to answer it. Question where your brain needs time to think. How does dental insurance work? I'll give you this one in a second here. Everything, your, your, your success in life is going to be determined by your ability to talk to and motivate people. Connect with and motivate people. Dentist, I want to let you know, you are become very weird. Dental school makes us very weird. You want to know why? You might have called a tooth a hopeless virgin. Okay, You've called a tooth a virgin. We've said to an 80-year-old, we can't do a bridge here, Millie. Your tooth, it's a virgin. What about the ones with the big filling in the back? Very promiscuous. It's going out at night. Why do we talk like that? Honestly, we say failure. We Something lasts 40 years. They're, they come in with a crown. There's a cavity underneath it. When was it done? It was done before the dentist was born. Sorry, your crown has failed. Why do we say that? Don't say fail. Say replaced. Don't say virgin. It's just very weird. Say tooth without a filling. Now we're back to here. I'm giving you talking systems, okay? Because this is going to help you. Same words you say in practice transition state of patients. Someone asks you a question that's weird. You don't know the answer to So this, someone asked me a question. That, that's a great question. Make the person feel good. They feel good already. I'm telling you my secrets. You feel good. I would want to know that too. Now you feel really good. I myself would also want to know this. The way it works. Now I'm transitioning to explaining. Okay. How much does my dental insurance cover? Does my dental insurance cover veneers? My sister's insurance covers veneers. Does my sister's insurance covers everything? Well, you're just lying because your sister's insurance doesn't do that. But say, that's a great question. I would want to know that too. The way it works is dental insurance is a lot like a coupon, a coupon with blackout dates. We're going to do the best job possible to maximize the benefit of your coupon. So I've used that talking script and shared it with people. And a dentist just wrote to me and said, I tried that on a patient and they went from angry to accepting the treatment plan. If you want more of those tips, we have them on Dental Nacho Flix and Dental Nacho Flix is free to test out for 30 days. Just text Flix to 215-543-6454 and you get a 30 day pass. Or the awesome Amanda has given you a $50 gift code right here. You're in the Zoom chat and we've made Nacho Flix. $97 for one entire year. So you can get all your self-study C8. There's over hundred hours on there. All kinds of talking tips for $97. Use your $50 code. It'll make it only $47. I encourage you to try out one of those two things. Back to this question. If the practice has a valuation done by a third party and the seller wants to sell within 2% of the range of valuation, which is 83% of revenue, is that still considered overpriced? That's a good question. I'd want to know that too. The way it works is... A third party evaluating the practice should be very objective. So when you get a third party, make sure it's not a broker. Make sure it's an independent practice appraisal person. We have someone who consults with our company. This person is not involved in selling practices. He just evaluates them. If you'd like to connect with this person and get a valuation for your practice, even if you're not deciding to sell, I think it's a great idea because I'm going to do a whole episode, Amanda, remind me about what happens if you have to sell your practice unexpectedly and most dentists are not prepared. Okay, injury, tragic life circumstances. So if you want, so when you get an independent appraisal, make sure it's independent. Make sure that person is not interested in the sale. So let's just say that this is the case here. I don't know if it is. Million dollar practice, they say it's $830,000 independent appraisal. Now you want to buy this practice. We're sitting here looking at all the answers in front of us on this screen. Net profit, location, total collections, number of operatories, insurance profile, active patients, procedure mix, rent versus own, staff profile and wages. Write down all the answers to that. It doesn't matter what you pay for the practice that you want provided these things. 
One, paying off the loan is not going to strangle your personal cash flow. Number two, you really, 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 really want this practice and or need it. So if you're the person here, if you want to share more about yourself who asked this question anonymously, or you can send it to Amanda, 83 paying 83% of collections for a practice is not a problem provided it's a strong practice, provided it's the one you want, provided it's one where you can replicate the services, and provided you might not have any other good choices, provided it's the right time in your life. So overpriced is a feeling, not a fact. Overpriced is a feeling, not a fact. Now, if you want to, so we all, I want to ask you guys a question in the chat or on Facebook. Your patient tomorrow morning comes in and you do endo. Let's say for this, you do endo. Your GPU does endo. Person comes in and they say, ah, my root canal, root canal back here underneath the crown, kind of feels swollen. You look up there, it's number 15, okay? Has an abscess, looks like a missed MB2. How many of you are going to open up that crown and start retreating it? Or are you going to refer to an endodontist? Who's going to refer to an endodontist? Who's going to say, it's Monday. What a fun thing to start my day with. Who is going to refer that endo to an endodontist? Okay, a lot of refer. So do you want the endodontist here? Do you want it? I'm going to give it to you. Amanda's going to give it to you. The text code for Ladd and Duckett. One of our key resources and sponsors, uh, Ladd and Duckett accountants, are dental-focused accountants. They're great guys. They're sponsors of the group. They are the endodontist of this world. So I do a lot of buyer coaching, treatment plan your hopes and dreams. I do this. I'm the limited oral exam PA guy. You can have a very affordable call with me and I will go through the deal with you, tell you if you're nacho nuts, don't even go any further, tell you if you should find out more, tell you if you should be first in line. The main people that I refer you to initially is the endodontist dental focus accountants. We have Jonathan Van Horn, who's a great key resource and sponsor, and Ladd and Duckett. What these guys do, could be women doing this at some point too, we just don't have any sponsor in the group. They look just at the numbers and they objectively tell you what it's going to feel like to buy this practice, what your profit is going to feel like if you do exactly what the seller did. So for this question here, for this question here, that determination would be, A, you write down all the answers yourself, then you go to endodontist, dental focus accountant. I don't care if they charge you 2000 I don't care if they charge you 5000 I don't know exactly what they I don't care if they charge you 1000 This is the biggest decision of your life. Don't mess up this part. When you take your documents to them, now, dentists, don't take every deal to them. You're just going to be spending too much money. Take the ones that you really like. But let's say that you really like this one. This is a really good point right here. What to do when your deal's about to die and you want to cry is because dentists skip this part right now. Golden nacho, orange nacho, bonus nacho, important nacho. In the process of connecting with the broker, Signing the NDA, meeting the dentist, getting the data, getting the tax returns before you make offer. This is my recommendation before offer. When you like all of these things and you, you say to yourself, self, do I really, really like this practice? Yes, self, I really like it. Hire endodontist, dental focus accountant, take documents to them objectively. Don't even talk that much about how much you like it and say, Hey, Ladd and Duckett. Hey, Jonathan Vintorn. Hey, Dental Focus Accountant that may or may not be a sponsor of the group. People do sponsor the group to connect with you guys. I refer people to people who I think are great people to work with, but you develop relationships with your own advisors. Take it to the Dental Focus Accountant and say, here's all the documents. What is it going to feel like for me if I buy this practice and do exactly what the seller does? Not add implants, not do us. They say, and for this 83% one, they say, okay, the seller does a million dollars. They profit 350. You're going to pay, uh, you're going to need like $900,000 loan because you need working capital. We have banks too that are sponsored the group to help you work with you. You should always be looking at multiple banks on each deal to get to see which one fits for you. Banking is more than just rates though. It's the relationship with that bank. So you talk to the dental focus accountant. They look at all this and they say, hey, Dr. Tad Nacho, toddler extension Nacho, five years out of school. If you purchase this practice and do exactly what Dr. Guac does, you're going to have $350,000 on the top. It's going to be $80,000 a year to pay the loan. You need leftover with 240, how this works with taxes. You're going to feel like you make $192,000 a year. Now, if you make 150, you might say, cool. If you make 280 working for DSO, you say, oh, geez, that's less. Doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it, but that is the most critical step. Your deal will die if you do not look at the numbers carefully in the beginning before you make a deal. Why do you want to make, why do you want to look at the numbers before you make a deal? Why do you want to look at the numbers before you make an offer? Okay, I'm going to move us along here to a couple of things here. Does anyone know why you want to talk to a dental focused accountant 
before you make an offer on your LOI, we're going to deconstruct some of this here. We're going to do these every Sunday. You're going to get to watch them over and over if you like. Just text connect to 215-543-6454. But I want to deconstruct some of this deal for you. But can somebody, so here's the process. I'm going to break it down. Find practice, sign NDA, talk to dentist, find out what type of broker you're working with, be cautious. Signing an NDA for a dual rep broker may, may convince, may, you may be signing to pay a fee later. So I have zero problem with you connecting with a dental focused attorney to look at your NDAs. That can be very responsible. Develop, if, if you're gonna buy a practice in the next two years, you gotta develop a relation with a dental focused accountant and a dental focused attorney. Develop relationship. It doesn't mean you have to have the deal on the table. Reach out to them. Hi, my name is Dr. Jennifer. Nacho Guy told me you would be good to talk to. Now you're connected with them. Amanda can share with you my podcast partner, uh, dental focus attorney, uh, Rob Montgomery. Also, uh, could you raise your hand for a second? I'm not sure if anyone's going to um, enjoy this. Uh, do you like free things? Do, do you like free things? Raise your hand or put in the chat. Love free. Love it. I know. Not your crown preps. They're works of art, right? Not free for you as the dentist, but free for you as the consumer, as much free as possible. Well, I did this thing. I don't know if you would be appreciate it. I did like 60 hours of recorded content on a podcast that goes over every step of buying a practice and what not to do. And we put it on this website called the dentalamigos.com. It's on Spotify and iTunes. And you could do this thing. It's amazing. Life is just so amazing. You can go and you can listen to it for free. But my, my idol, my, my mentor, but he doesn't really think of me as his mentee, but maybe one day Gary B says, you know why he puts out all his great stuff for free? You know why I put all my great stuff for free out? People don't act on it. There's plenty of stuff you can pay for and not just calls, CE, things like that. Amanda will share with you. But there's also so many free things, but you got a value free. So go to Dental Amigos, listen to one episode, listen to two episodes a week. If you do that, you will learn a lot. In there, that dental focused attorney, Rob Montgomery, we talked about why you want a dental focused attorney to help you with an LOI. We're going to talk about that today a little bit. And also why you want to develop a relationship with those two people are so important. Dental focused accountant, dental focused attorney. If a dental focused accountant charges $3,000 to look at a deal, just using example, and a dental focused attorney charges $9,000, I wanna give you some advice. Don't have them look at five deals at the same time. Go for one deal, so use information from me. Maybe we do buyer coach call, maybe we don't. But what I'm sharing with you is you can develop relationships with people for free. Just reach out to them, get them to get to know you and say, oh, I got this NDA from this dual representation broker and Rob Montgomery's team be like, oh, can you send that to us? Who cares if you have to pay him $400 to look at it, $200? Imagine you signing a piece of paper that messes you up later, big time, messes you up later. So NDA, you sign it, you meet the dentist, you like it, you go back and you look at all those things, write down your own answers. Maybe we have a call, maybe we don't, maybe just listen to my podcast, maybe use Nacho Flix, whatever you do and say, whatever you do, you get to the point where you feel like this. I really, 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 really like this practice. Before you make an offer, look at the numbers with a dental focused attorney. Here's why I'm going to tell you this, okay? I can give you this example. Here's the feeling. If you come to a C course, and I say the C course is nine to 4 p.m. when in-person in CE is, is back. Nine to 4 p.m. And I end at 5 p.m. I tell you it's nine to four, and I end at 5 p.m. Are you annoyed we ended late? Tell me if you're annoyed. You're annoyed we ended late. You get to a CE course, you say, I wanna go. They said 4 p.m. When it's 4.30, who's annoyed? Raise your hand. Annoyed, yeah. Even though you're learning, even though you're there learning, right? I wanna share with you why, I'm gonna show you the craziest thing why people are annoyed, because this is a restaurant server thing. We were trained to get our check to people and not mess up the check drop because people would get upset. You ever be at a restaurant with your friends having a wonderful time drinking drinks and you're annoyed, you don't have the check. You're sitting with your friends. It's an insane feeling, but you're annoyed because the human brain, it works against us a lot. So managing expectations is so key. So what I say at my C courses, and Amanda knows because we talk about the brain as a dentist because I have one, we say the C course is nine to 5.30. What if I told you the C course is nine to 5.30 and we finish at 4.45? Are you happy? Who's happy there? Who thinks they got 45 minutes of life back? All of you. Same thing, same managing of expectations. So when you offer money on a practice, it's literally so important. The offer you put in, don't say a number you don't want to commit to. Because if you tell the dentist, I want to offer 800, and then later you work with the bank, you say, this is an accountant, this is 700, they never forget the 800. 
So get a good offer together with your team. This is a once decision. Do not be cheap on your once decision. Good advice is never expensive. I want to share with you, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're listening to the show, you're watching my face, you're doing this. If you cannot afford to hire a dental focused attorney, if you cannot afford to hire a dental focused accountant, not the right time for you to buy a practice, not the right time. I've seen way too many people mess up by saying, oh, I can't pay 2,500 bucks for this. I can't pay $5,000 for this. Then it's not the right time. It's not the right time for you to buy a practice. It's the biggest decision of your life. Do not be cheap on it. Here, when deals die, I, I've spent $12,000 on advisory fees, fees and had the deal go not go through. Best $12,000 I spent because they protected me from the process. So why, how do deals die and you want to cry? It's a lot of the first part here connecting with a dental focused accountant and attorney early, getting a strong offer in place. And now let's deconstruct some of these steps in this yellow brick road as we go along here for a few minutes. So we need an interested seller, okay? Selling a practice. You might be a seller in the chat. You might be a buyer. You might be in the middle. You might be listening to this years now. It's the same process. You ever see this great show, Jeopardy? Has anyone seen Jeopardy? It's a great show. So whether Jeopardy, the answer and the question. So whether you're a seller or buyer, same thing we're looking at here. Contact a broker to discuss the process, gather pertinent information on the practice. If you'd like us to share with you how we sell practices totally for free, just text looking to sell the 215-543-6454. Member of the Nacho team will break it down for you, just like a complimentary implant console. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to sign anything. They'll break down that process. If you want to move forward, we'll tell you what other stuff. If you don't want to move forward, no problem. You got some information. So gather pertinent information on the practice. The valuation range for the practice sale is different than an independent appraisal. A, what brokers do, including me, is give a range and a price with optimistic sale for the seller. So here's my conversation. You want some insider tips? I want to sell Dr. Amanda's house of dentistry and bread making. Here's what I say to her, okay? Because I'm really good at my expectations. Dr. Amanda, we looked at all of your practice information. You got a great practice. I, I like that you named after bread. Everybody likes bread. Here's the deal. We are going to list your practice for $1 million but any offer over 800 is a good offer. So what that means, Dr. Amanda, is that we've looked at it and $800,000 makes sense, but you're in Center City, Philadelphia and you have six operatories and it's a very popular area and you collect $1.2 million a year. So we're gonna list for a million, Dr. Amanda, but any offer over 800 is a good offer because now I'm managing Amanda's expectations because if the first offer comes in at 900, Amanda says, oh yeah, Nacho Broker told me, it, anything over 800 is good. She doesn't say, darn it, they cannot get my bread making dental factory for 900. I thought it was a million. That is the range, the range. When you're a buyer and you really like, it, here's the biggest problem. Buyers, you skip a lot of steps. You go, you go crazy. It'd be like, if anyone played baseball, buyers, it'd be like, you run to first base, then to the dugout, then to third base and be like, is this how this works? I'm like, this is how none of this works. You don't go first base, second base, third base, home. Don't start throwing out, is the seller negotiable? Every seller in the history of sellers is negotiable for any item, right? Any item, make the strongest offer that you wanna make and feel good about and be able to explain it. If Dr. Amanda's practice listed for a million and you wanna offer 910, say, hey, I looked at it, the net profit is $450,000, twice that is 900,000, but you're in Center City, I'd like to offer 910. Maybe Amanda comes back and says, great. Maybe Dr. Amanda says, I want a million. This is how this game is played. It's the opposite of dentistry. It's not cut and dry. It's not take out the K, put in filling. It is a business thing and dentists hate business things because it's very unpredictable. But much like getting married, which hopefully sometimes you only do once, but sometimes people do more than once for a variety of reasons, it's a huge life decision. So be willing to be annoyed, be willing to, to, to ask a lot of questions, be willing to explore a lot of opportunities and be willing to waste a lot of time because there's no such thing as wasted time researching your biggest life opportunities. You want to share about me here? You want to share about me? I'm Dr. Paul Nacho Goodman. At this recording, I'm 43 years old. I've looked at minimum 35 dental practices to buy. Technically, I've purchased four. So I've looked at 35. I'm very open-minded. I like to look at anything. All I need, here's what you need to open. To, this is a golden nacho tip, and Amanda, we should do a video on this because it's really important. If you want to say in the chat you want to buy a dental practice, you can. I know it's like people think it's like confidential and someone's going to know. I actually think that people should be more open to this. Like, you know, if you work for, if you work for, if my associates came to me and say, hey, Paul, I want to buy a dental practice in the next three to five years, I would say, great. I'd love for you to do that. I want you to be as successful as you could be. But I know I'm a little bit not too ordinary. Okay. I'm very abundance minded, collaborative. So I get why you think it's maybe confidential. Let's just pretend you're somebody in the chat 
who wants to buy a practice? Because some of you are. Here's the only information that I need in your shoes, okay? Is all I need. Ready? Ready for it? Golden notch of tip. It's all I need to move forward and find out. Location of the practice, number one. Number of operatories, number two. Total collections of the last year, number three. That's it. it. Location, operatories, total collections. Let me talk to myself like Tyler Nacho Durden. Hi, Dr. Nacho. We have a dental practice for sale. It is in Villanova, PA already. It's in my circle. Good. Six operatories. Great. Collected 700,000. I want to meet the dentist. Give me the thing to sign. I don't need to know about active patients. I don't need to know the seller's favorite burr for doing crown preps. I don't need to know about their philosophy on occlusion. None of that. Don't ask too many questions because you want to know why? You're wasting your own time. Get the location, no, total collections, number of operatories, and find out more about the person running the practice, the dentist. So I'll tell you a story about the practice deals. What to do when your practice deal is about to die and you want to cry. One of the practices we bought, I went out to meet the dentist. My brother and my dad at the time in 2012 said, this dentist is never going to want to sell to you. He wants all the money up front and he's not going to de deal with half up front, half later. I said, okay, let me just meet him. Let me let him meet me. So I went and I met him and surprise, surprise, he changed his tune because he said, I really want to work with the Goodmans. People, things matter. Dental offices are people places, not pizza places. Dentists are good with patients. They're not good with people. If you want to buy a practice or sell a practice, you got to practice being good with people. I don't care if you just practice for a year like dating. You get in great shape. You look at this. Then once you get married, you let yourself go. Eat on the couch and watch Netflix. It's kind of a real thing that happens anyway. So, but you got to be good with people for buying and selling a practice. You got to change. If you don't know how to do it, start taking courses from Toastmasters. Start reading books on it. Connecting and talking with people is everything. You also could just use Nacho Flix and literally listen to all of our bonus content and practice transitions content. And I put all the answers into there by texting Flix to 215-543-6454. So let's break down some of this. Who can buy a dental practice? These are the people who can buy a dental practice. These are the different interested buyers. If you're a seller, you might sell to traditional My First Practice, small group, large group, or a DSO. Then you have, I have a value, a conversation listing agreement uh, discussion with the with the dentist. DSOs can pay more because they don't need bank financing. I'm going to introduce the buyer. Buyer super interested. We talked about this. The letter of intent, important first thing to stop on, submitting an LOI. Analyze the true profit and make a, a, a offer accordingly. I don't know who told you that. Oh yeah, it was me five minutes ago. Use dental focused accountant. Don't use feelings. Biggest decision of life. Don't use feelings. Don't miss out on a practice because you're cheap. Don't miss out on practice cheap. Find real numbers and talk with real people who do this. I'm going to change this to do want to have an attorney fabricate an LOI. But if you go to the Dental Amigos, we have a whole episode on LOIs and why a dental folks attorney should make one because it sets the tone for the asset purchase agreement. There's a timeline for the LOI. It can include the practice and the real estate. Amanda, as we go through this series, we're going to do how not to burn your nachos. Should I buy, should I buy the real estate as a whole separate uh, topic? LOI to asset purchase agreement. This is the longest, most stressful time. Ask the dental focused attorney to really help you. You're going to fabricate a post-sale employment agreement for the dentist, or they may just be leaving. I put here on some of my notes, this is when we talk about what happens to the accounts receivable, who collects that or who doesn't collect that. Is anybody in this chat a practice owner? Because I'm going to share with you an amazing tool. If you raise your hand, if you're a practice owner, just hanging out here, you don't even want to buy or sell, or maybe you want to buy a third or fourth practice. We just added in our practice, one of our key resources sponsors, Abella. Amanda, you put their text code in there. Yeah, this is really going to help you. Who raised their hand? Watch this. It's the best thing that happened to you in a while because it's happened to me. Watch. There's things that happen like this. Amanda, just put the text code for Abella in there, but I'll put it here. So we, AR, accounts receivable, is super annoying. Do you ever have a patient who say, bill me for 50 bucks? And then they never pay the 50 bucks. Has that happened? Bill me, bill me for the 50 bucks and they never pay the 50 bucks. So that happens to us. So what we did on Thursday last week, Abel is a key person and sponsor. They're magic. They're literally magic. So you set up this text and email thing with Abella. Then Abella sends it out. Kate, who's my awesome friend and office manager, I think she thinks I'm crazy because I am crazy, but she's like, I don't know if I want to try this. They're all, she's always like, I don't know if I want to try it, but Paul says try it. And it usually winds up well. And she knows she's got to try it. Everything in my life, you got to test. Test it for 30 days. You hate it, don't do it. But don't say you're not going to try it. Don't say you're not going to try it. So we sent it out, 80, 80 statements, okay? 80 statements to people. 
some were 20 bucks, some were 2,000. Texted them right out to people. One day, $3,100, people paid through their phone. $3,100. Abella is offering this for free for 30 days. I'm keeping it at, in, in my office. Uh, you could text Abella to 215-543-6454. It's literally, oh man, I put the other one up there too. It's one of the greatest things I've seen because somebody where people are calling up Kate and like, I didn't know I had a balance. And we're just like in our minds, we're like, you just ignored the last seven bills, but they pay it because text message and email feels like, oh, I better do this thing. So it is a great tool. Now, if you're buying a practice and you're dealing with the AR, you may want to say to this, the broker, you know, why don't you tell the seller to use this platform? Because if there's $80,000 left on the AR, you try to collect after you take over the practice, it's much harder than the seller collecting it. These are things you put into the asset purchase agreement. Credentialing with insurances is an whole other issue. We're gonna have a whole session on that. We actually have an amazing sponsor, Vivek Keener from PPO Profits, who can get you higher insurance fees or at least evaluate that. You text happy to 215-543-6454. Or Amanda, you can actually just drop his um, affiliate link into the, into the chat because he can help you make money more money forever by doing the same work. Can, not always, but can. People have used and been very, very happy. Credentialing with insurances is, is a key component of the practice deal crying, dying thing. One of the biggest things that delay a practice deal, does anyone know one of the biggest things that delay a practice deal? The buyer not being credentialed with insurances. And you think you left your job, you're gonna do November 1st. You say, oh geez, I'm not credentialed. I can't be till February 1st. Now you have no job for two months. Now the seller might be frustrated. So these are all deal, die, cry things. So we're going to wrap up in a few minutes here. Um, I want to stop this for a second. And here's what I'm going to do, because I like to make these like a real TV show, one hour in length. People are asking about that. So I'm going to stop my video, and I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to ask any questions that you would like in the chat, and I can answer them for the next four to seven minutes. And I'll show you guys... So if you have any questions in the chat, Amanda, you can drop on our link for next week. The Nacho Flex stuff. Take advantage of the resources, your discounts. If you have any personal questions for me, you can text them to 215-543-6454. That's my real community text hotline attached to my phone. For those of you who know me, my phone and I, very close friends, my phone and I. Show you one more video before we get out of here. So this is one of my favorite videos. We'll end on this. Any questions I'll ask throughout this. It's a funny video from a couple of years ago. Uh, over the past um, six years, I had two small human beings that are permanently now in our house. They're called children. That process, nobody tells you about. They let you go to the hospital. It's two people. You leave with the third person, no questions, no help, no questions. But when you come home with your baby, nobody wants to come over and help you. But with your practice, nobody wants to come over. Nobody wants to help you watch your four operatory practice in a strip mall. Just to let you know, they don't care. You feel like you're alone on an island. So this, this uh, funny six minutes will help you with this. Amanda will share how you can reach out to us more. Enjoy doing this. I love doing these shows. Check in with us next week for another episode of this, focusing on another topic, finding the right team. We're going to keep doing this weekly to share responsible information. One of my favorite things to do. Thanks for hanging in with us. Transitions. And how do they make you feel when you go through those transitions? So we're going to talk about the wild little nacho world of practice transitions. But before we get to that, let's go back to our life transitions. So what's one of uh, our big transitions? One that I think of is uh, graduating from high school. So it makes you feel excited that you have to leave your parents' house but nervous because you don't have any money. <laughs> People are like, you're an adult. I'm like, I'm an adult with no money. It's a pretty useless adult. <laughs> then you go to uh, college, and you're like, I'm ready to go to college, but I'm going to leave my parents' house. I remember August is like the popular time. It was 1995 for me. I went shopping with my parents. And I was like, uh, you need a dust ruffle for your college bed. <laughs> like, I cannot show up mom with a dust ruffle to college so that's making a statement and statement is not I'm a super chill guy here to have fun so I'm very concerned about dust 
<laughs> Someone help me put my bed skirt on. <laughs> so I'm going to take that risk. So you're at college. I mean, that what they ask you to do to go to college, you can only do because you want to leave your parents' house. I went to Villanova. They sent us a, a message midsummer. They're like, we uh, accepted too many people, right? Like they didn't have control over that whole entire operation. <laughs> You're going to have to live in a room with two grown adult men and you. And I'm like, uh, all right, I'll do it. I get to leave my parents' house. But uh, I wound up sleeping on the top bunk, so that was good. I did not get the dust ruffle because that would have been real, really bad. <laughs> so you're in college, you graduate from there, but that makes you feel excited. You're done, but also anxious. You, know, you have to get a real job for most people, but we went to dental school, so we're like, we'll delay that for a few years. Your friends had to go out and get a real job. Then you get to uh, dental school that first day. Everyone kind of remembers the first day. I remember the first person I saw uh, at dental school when we got out of our car, no cell phones. I'm like, that guy looks like he's going to dental school. I'm going to follow him. And, uh, you go in, it's like, you know, this bright-eyed person, like, I'm here to learn about teeth. Dental school's like, uh, we're going to make you cry. So, you know, it's a very different experience. But you get through that, you graduate from dental school, and that is, like, one of the greatest, best days because, you know, you get your diploma on stage in some big ceremony. You want to be like, I did it, dental school. You, I won. You do not have control over me anymore. But then, like, you gave us $400,000. There's going to be a lot of control for the next 30 years. you got to pay back these loans. So these transitions, you think about it, they make you feel excited, but also a little weird, right? If you get nachos, you're just fully excited. No one also feels weird about getting nachos. It's just, so it's an interesting experience when you go through these things. Then you have some personal life transitions, like getting married. You know, that's a great day. But it's also very serious. Like, we're talking about managing expectations, and I just don't think they manage your expectations for what marriage really is. <laughs> like, everyone's laughing because they're married. It's like, when you do it, when you're doing it, they use these words like, you know, love, happiness, being for, being there for each other. It's like not full informed consent, right? It should be like, uh, it's, it's way more serious than that. It's like uh, marriage is basically, it is a legal obligation to hang out with the same person for the rest of your life. They put it to you that way, you know? I think people take it more seriously. Like, I'd like to stop hanging out with this person. Uh, you're gonna need to get a judge involved in that. <laughs> so that's a serious thing. But all of those things put together, for me, I listed some of them here. All those things put together do not compare to the biggest game changer of all for me, the biggest transition, and that is having another human being. So this is August 1st, 2014. Uh, we're bringing Daphne home from the hospital in her car seat there. So you go into the hospital, it's two people, and you leave with a whole extra person. And as you're leaving, you're like, I feel like there should be more rules to this process. <laughs> I mean, uh, I just came with two people, I got an extra person, like, should I be taking a test, doing jumping jacks, Sudoku, something? But they're like, no, just take them home, take your baby home. And uh, you know, we put more training into baristas at Starbucks than to parents, and that's pretty insane, and sometimes you see that out, out there in society. But there is a rule in Philadelphia, I don't know if you can tell from this picture, it's a rule that makes no sense at all. You have to bring the child home in a car seat. <laughs> you do not have to have a car. <laughs> so you bring this up and look at the child is like it's like newborn baby frog your wife it that is a lot of effort they've done it i mean mary deserves like nachos for a long time for having a child so like like paul you gotta strap your baby frog into this car seat which is very difficult into the room that's the last thing there says just like get on out of here so people are just walking down broad street with their child back to their house the rule makes no sense it's like a rule from dental school it's no sense so we got these rules here how can they make no sense? These are just the rules we've had for 50 years. So I think that, you know, when you go through these transitions and people don't help you with these big life decisions in a, in a meaningful way and big dentist decisions, uh, you can just have problems. Just like we heard yesterday from Rob Montgomery and Jamie Amos. And what I'd like to create is just some more space about these transitions and what we're doing because, you know, purchasing a dental practice, uh, where you're going to dentist and anchor yourself for a long time. I mean, this is my brother, Jeff and I, at the sign in our dad's office. This is us. Um, I was eight and uh, three. See, like I'm kind of, that face looks like I'm kind of bossing around there. And I'm like, didn't change much 30 years later. But uh, you, know, you go through these transitions, but we had a dad who was a dentist, so we didn't have to you know, dig into all of these things in the same way. But we have purchased multiple practices since there. So if you're thinking, hey, I am done purchasing practices, I've heard people say, hey, I'm done having kids. And then I see him again, and there are more kids. So. <laughs> some point they think it is a good uh, decision to have another child and you know we have a satellite practice 
uh, now we're co-parents of this practice here, and we have a satellite practice in uh, Ewing, New Jersey. So you may purchase another practice, and sometimes you have a, a child, and uh, like next time I do this, I'm going to make I'm going to do things differently because I made some errors. I learned from it. So we do the same thing with our practice transitions. But people say me, tell me a lot of times, you know, or ask like, what's it like to own a practice? Is it like having a child? And I would say yes, it is, but it's not like having an infant because infants are actually very easy. You know, they're they're very small. They sleep a lot. You could just pick them up. Like you can you can drink a margarita with one hand and hold your infant in the other hand. <laughs> and that is a true story from Elvis. Some people are like, why do you have a baby at the bar? I'm like, why don't you have a baby at the bar? Don't you love your child? I want to bring her out wherever you go. But see, she's sleeping. But what is it like to have a dental practice? And it's not like having an infant. It's like having Daphne a year ago. It's like having a three-year-old child for 30 years that never grows up. Awesome, guys. We'll see you next week. Amanda, you can end the meeting. Have a great rest of the day.